The TM Light Circus visited the Abbotsford Speedway in Abbotsford, Wisconsin, not far from Wausau. Claire Alcier started from the pole, but Chris Pagano made an aggressive move on the inside on the opening lap in an attempt to take the lead, which turned out to be successful, an aggressive three-wide pass early on. Alcier continued to fall back into the clutches of Wyatt Castle in the 40 car. French-Canadian's car was struggling early on. Pagano was flying early on and led the first 36 laps until he hit the pit lane. James Hewitt tried to make an aggressive pass and pit entry and was successful. However, Mark Blackwell made the same attempt and failed. And you may also notice Buffy Boreanaz also missed the pit entry. Wyatt Castle led after the first round of pit stops, trying to put a lap on Bill Calhoun. Matt Brinson gets involved in some contact with Victor Kane, goes spinning down towards pit entry. Then problems with car 25 all week. Steve Holiday Jr. gets turned by old friend Buffy Boreanaz, makes another attempt at retaliation, but he fails and hits the wall. Holiday Jr. and Boreanaz have had an ongoing feud through the latter part of the midseason, as he continues to lose more ground in the championship in that Great Lakes Motorsports entry. Daniel Melrose, the mad uncle, has more contact with Victor Kane and Will Lewis. The 67 car goes spinning up in front of traffic, setting off a huge uh, chain reaction here involving Duran Ridman, Mike Humphreys, the nine car of Josh Marshall, Rob Blake, and many others. Jack Dempsey led on the restart in car number 41, the Australian having a good showing today. New sponsors have appeared on the double zero car driven by Dylan Buchanan. Melian was one of the many companies to jump on board the Scotsman's run at the championship, and he has been very quick all weekend long. He wasn't able to show it in qualifying. Will Lewis in car number two is not done with more drama, getting turned around this time by Kurt Reynolds, and Will Lewis did not exactly take kindly to that, sliding back up into the 88 car, but taking his own teammate Robert Blake into the wall. More trouble for Matt Brinson. Some contact in the midfield. Brinson decides to express his displeasure by door checking the 18 of Steve Holiday Jr. into the wall. Point leader Hector Serrano has used this opportunity after, to get back in the lead lap after a very after a very poor opening to this race. Buchanan leads on the restart in the double zero car. Team Timothy looking very quick all weekend, especially with this car. And Buchanan really needs a strong run here to, ch to chew away at Serrano's points lead letting the 62 of Rhoda go by. Alciath went after she thought she was getting her uh, race back on track. She gets punted into the wall by Matt Brinson. Ross Carter gets involved in a tangle with Luke Ocean. The 69 of Bill Calhoun is also involved. Going further back into the field, Ashley Tucker gets pile-driven by Friedrich Yeager and one of the Power Surge Incorporated cars. Buchanan in the double zero continues to lead. Gerald Johnson brings out a late race caution after he gets turned around by the 41 of Jack Dempsey. 38 car is not done with drama here as Kurt Reynolds runs into him and so does Ross Carter. Carter was called to the steward's office after that uh, eyesight failure. Despite a strong late race charge from Luke Ocean, Dylan Buchanan proved unstoppable and he took the win giving his new sponsors a lot to look forward to. Jack Dempsey completed the podium, Ike Durbin and Victor Kane completing the top five. Victor Kane was invited to the steward's office for a very lengthy discussion. Pagano, Castle, Hadalan, Serrano, and Brad Dwyer completed the top ten. Ross Carter was handed a one-race suspension for his contact into Gerald Johnson. But the team appealed the suspension, and he was allowed to take part in the next race of the series at the Provo Motorsports Park in Provo, Utah. The Great Lakes Motorsports cars locked out the front row with Steve Holiday Jr. taking the pole. Victor Kane charged from the second row to make a move for the lead in turn two on the opening lap. Ingrid Hadeland in car number 10 followed him through. Claire Alcier was the fastest in, in both of the practice sessions, however she was mired a little bit further back in the field in qualifying. Link's teammate Ingrid Hadeland begins to challenge Wyatt Castle for second place. Hadeland is yet to score a win or a podium. She was fourth at Darlington, her best finish to date. John Quackenbush in car 34 collects the back of Friedrich Jaeger, then gets turned around by Joel Rodriguez. That's going to put Quackenbush well back in the pack that he was looking for a very good run today. Hector Serrano in the 22 car is currently running in 22nd position. That is outside the points. Hadeland and leader Victor Kane kick off the, uh, the round of green flag stops with Claire Aussier in the number 11 running long. That gamble paid off as Claire Aussier was brought much closer to Victor Kane. However, Wyatt Castle dropped all the way back to 40th after his pit crew held him in his, in his box after several errors on that stop, and he lost a lap. 
Hector Serrano didn't have a very good pit stop either as he went all the way back to 33rd, not doing his title hopes any good and seriously putting them in doubt. However, none of his title rivals are faring a whole lot better. James Hewitt was running back in 36th place and Matt Brinson in the 25 car experienced problems as, the, as his car broke down. Wyatt Castle continued to be an obstacle for the leaders. He was maintaining pace with Alcier, Kane, and Hadeland, but was blocking them and ignoring the blue flags the entire race. During the second round of pit stops, Alcier was again the last car to pit, and look at her advantage over Victor Kane. Alcier has been one of the only drivers not to complain about the tire compound in use this week. Josh Marshall and his teammate Troy Adams in the, in the 19 car are continuing to battle hard for position, making contact with each other as Dylan Buchanan makes a bold move on the outside. However, there is contact and Josh Marshall is run into the wall by teammate Troy Adams and Dylan Buchanan gets caught up in the mix as well. A late race engine failure from Dan Richards epitomizes his weekend. Ingrid Hadeland makes a bold move on Victor Kane as Claire Alcier continues to run away with the race and take her first win of the season at Provo. Ingrid Hadeland got her first podium of the season, and Victor Kane followed up one of his sloppiest weekends with one of his best. Michael Humphreys came all the way back from 32nd to 4th, and Steve Holiday Jr. rounded out the top five. The battle between those two was only resolved in the last lap. Gabriel Massena, Joel Rodriguez, Bill Calhoun, Ike Durbin, and Chris Pagano round out the top ten. Atlantic Motorsports successfully appealed Ross Carter's suspension, getting it reduced to a two-race suspended ban, allowing him to take part in round 16 of the championship in Burlington, Vermont at the Burlington Raceway, a much unused track that hasn't been used for anything as large as the TM Light since the series' last visit here in 2000. Melrose Racing Team, as you just noticed, has locked out the front row, Friedrich Jaeger and Daniel Melrose, with Jaeger taking the pole. Jaeger is going to make a bid to, have to take the lead away from his teammate, the Mad Uncle Melrose, in turn three, which is going to prove to be successful. Melrose gets out of the way to avoid contact. As you see here, we have a lot of three and four wide on the opening laps, and while many people were fearful that turn three would be a bit of a parking lot, that wasn't the case. And as you see there, a big save from Dan Richards and Matt Brinson after a little bit of incidental contact on the opening lap. Giovanni Rota is looking to prove something to not only himself, but uh, to Matthews Motorsports, and he's making a good attempt at that with this gutsy overtake on the 73 car, Friedrich Jaeger. Rhoda has not been, uh, has performed a bit, uh, not as well as he would have liked, perhaps. His teammate, Mariano Zavala, however, was being involved in this incident after Brad Dwyer tipped him into Claire Aussier, sending the 61 car for several rolls. Dwyer insisted he was not at fault, although I don't know who he's trying to kid. Thurston Blood in the 16 car is beginning to challenge the 34 car of John Quackenbush. Thurston Blood is one of two former champions in the series today. Um, and the other being Troy Adams right behind him in that black and red 19 car. Thurston Blood is uh, trying to gain something to hopefully step up to the Master Cup series at some level, at some point in the future. Doreen Ridman has been capturing headlines this year for all of the wrong reasons, and as you see right here, with this to contact with uh, Dan Richards in the 07 car, he is not changing his reputation this year. Ridman leads the series in DNFs. Giovanni Rota in the 62 car is going to lose the lead, it looks like, to the 73 car of Jaeger. Jaeger throws it around the outside in a mirror, and a mirror overtake of what Rota did to him just a couple of laps prior. Rhoda trying to fight back, goes off into the sand pit, and that's going to cost him not only second, but third as well, dropping him well down the order. However, the Italian is the Italian's efforts today are still commendable. Daniel Melrose himself cracks under pressure from uh, John Quackenbush in the, in the 34 car, who is doing his, uh, his career a lot of good with this drive today. Joel Rodriguez's career has been revitalized with his tenure uh, in the series a bit. He, in this 86 car. Jaeger goes wide in turn three, and Rodriguez has an attempt to take the lead, but there is John Quackenbush in the gravity racing car. This is uh, this is easily turning out to be one of the best battles um, we've seen today, and all season for that matter, on a track that a lot of people did not think was going to have a lot of overtaking on it. As you can see, the drivers have proved the doubters wrong, and Rodriguez is putting on a great defense of the lead. However, it looks like Quackenbush will have a good run on the inside. And as Joe Rodriguez runs off the track, that confirms that the 34 car is the new race leader. Troy Adams in the 19 car runs down the uh, 34 of Quackenbush. Troy Adams, another former champion in this division, had one year in the Master Cup Series ranks driving for the uh, Star Nomoto team. Did not pan out very well, came back here and he has uh, been doing a lot of work not only 
uh, competing for, for the Down Under Motorsports team, but mentoring Josh Marshall. He's been doing both very well. Jaeger continuing to hold off some faster cars. He has been able to catch the 34 of Quackenbush, and he is keeping the 86 of Rodriguez at bay along with Jack Dempsey in the 41 car. More three-wide racing between the, these three cars as we come down the front straightaway. And I again say, who thought there wasn't going to be overtaking in this race? Hmm, perhaps the paddock made us be uh, full of hot air at times. But uh, as you see right here, Quackenbush wins the battle, and after all three drivers avoid, uh, uh, avoid contact, something that the stewards no doubt are happy to see. At half distance, here's who is pitting. Looks like just about everyone in the field is hitting the pit stops. Han Young Sung almost runs wide, and Friedrich Jaeger stays out to push fuel a bit longer to hopefully make up uh, some track position by running longer, and some contact almost entering the pits. Han Young Sung gets in get into Gabriel Massena, and Massena retaliates in kind, sending the 71 car off the road. Gabriel Massena has been a bit of a uh, has been a surprise performer in that three car all year, as has Han Young Sung. Points leader Hector Serrano, after pitting, is running in the 16th position, doing his championship hopes a lot of good because most of his title contenders are in the mirror. Friedrich Jaeger has stretched his fuel perhaps a bit too far to lap 17. And it looks like that's going to be a very bad decision because it looks like he's run out of fuel in that car. And Jaeger's costly strategic uh, error is going, to, is going to cost him any shot at a win. Victor Kane uh, mirrored the strategic decisions of Jaeger and copied his strategic blunders as well. Hector Serrano is running in 13th and he's been able to keep a lot of cars behind him, some of which include his title rivals. Gabriel Massena, running in 7th, runs off the road in car number 3. Massena's had a bit of an eventful day so far. The 34 car of John Quackenbush runs down Ashley Tucker in the 12. Tucker, the driver to gain the most positions under that pit stop uh, cycle. Tucker moved up into third. She's now back to fourth. Tucker now falling backwards into the clutches of Jack Dempsey in the 41 and Trek Tauger in the 4, both of whom have been able to make up a lot of ground on this 12 car due to her own uh, errors, uh, unforced errors, I should point out. The 41 car able to go by, Tucker wide again, and it's become clear that Tauger is going to have a good run on the outside. She tries to squeeze the Austrian out, but uh, Trek Tauger is able to hang on and claim uh, the uh, fifth position, demoting Tucker to sixth. Troy Adams was unopposed at the front of the field, and he dominated the second half of the race. A well-deserved victory for Down Under Motorsports. Despite setting fastest lap of the race, Joel Rodriguez was unable to close the gap on Adams, but he still did himself a lot of good today. Jack Dempsey completed the podium in third. Tauger, Quackenbush, Tucker had solid runs, but a seventh place for James Hewitt is going to do his championship efforts a lot of good. Michael Humphreys, Buffy Boreanis, and Gabriel Massena completed the top ten. Ross Carter has completed some of his most controversial uh, weeks in the series with one of his strongest runs so far. Hector Serrano in 13th is going to do his championship bid a lot of good, especially since many of his rivals have gained a lot of points on him lately. Most notably Dylan Buchanan, who is 54 markers out of the lead. However, Tucker, Hewitt, Brinson, and Ike Durbin are still considered legitimate threats for the title. However, all of them are going to need a Serrano DNF, I think, in order to really take the title. Serrano has been running at the checkers every single race so far this year, and that's why he's leading the championship. The final three races of the season are all companion events of the TM Master Cup Series, beginning with the last oval race of the season at the Chicago Motor Speedway in Cicero, Illinois.